Okay, this is our linear motion one. It's the introduction to linear motion. And there are two things I want to focus on. The first one is motion is relative. So what do we mean by motion is relative? We're talking about a frame of reference. And let's say you're driving in a car. And the speedometer reads 60 miles an hour. So you're traveling at 60, except that actually depends on who you're asking. Let's say you're asking someone who's on the side of the road. They're going to claim that, yes, you're moving at 60 miles an hour. They're at rest. They're standing on the earth, and they see a car zoom by at 60 miles an hour. You're the driver, though. Are you actually going at 60? Well, if you think about it, all the passengers in your car, all of your stuff inside the car, everything, and your center console, your backpack on the back seat, uh, the car itself, and you all seem to be motionless you don't have an issue with trying to shake someone's hand inside your car because relative to each other you're motionless even though that someone on the side of the road claims you're going at 60. The idea is you as a driver can claim that you are motionless instead the earth and everything on the earth is moving at 60 miles an hour with respect to you. Now why is this useful? Let's say you're driving at 60 miles an hour and a car is coming towards you at 60 miles an hour and these speeds are relative to an observer standing on the side of the road. Well, there's nothing wrong with saying you're motionless and that car is coming at you at 120 miles an hour. Now this works in uh, a couple of different ways. For example, let's say an automotive company wants to do a crash test. What happens if a new car release crashes into oncoming traffic and hits a car that's going 40 while their car is going 40? Well, instead of smashing two cars together, both going at 40 miles an hour, they can take one car and smash it into a brick wall at 80 miles an hour. So here we have two cars going at 60, heading towards each other. It's the exact same problem as one car is motionless and one car is going 120. This makes problems easier to solve. Uh, for example, if we take a look at this one here, you have two objects heading towards each other. One's going at 20 meters per second. The other is going at 30. They're 500 meters apart. When are they going to collide? You could gradually get to a conclusion that they're going to collide closer to object A um, and then do a little bit of math and figure that out. Or we could say, we're going to rewrite this and say object A is motionless. Object B is moving at it or towards it at 50. And it's now 500 meters away. When do they collide? Well, the distance is 500 meters. The velocity is 50 meters per second. There's no acceleration. We can use velocity as distance over time. Rewrite it, solve for time. Time is 10 seconds. So they will collide in 10 seconds. Now, this was great at figuring out at what time they're going to collide, but it does not actually tell us the position. We would have to say, OK, they collide in 10 seconds. Object A was going 20 meters per second. How far did it travel in those 10 seconds? And therefore, you can figure out the point of collision. Second thing I want to talk about is speed versus velocity, as well as average versus instantaneous. Speed is what you're familiar with. Speed just says, how fast are you going? You should be pretty familiar with speed. Velocity is saying, how fast are you going and in what direction? So velocity cares about direction. Speed does not. Both of them are measured in meters per second. Speed is a scalar, which means it's just a number. It has no direction associated with it. Velocity is a vector, so it has the number and the direction. Speed is always positive. Velocity can be positive or negative. Your car, the speedometer, is measuring speed. It's measuring speed um, because there's no direction associated with that. Although, yes, most cars do have a compass these days that's not actually attached to the speedometer, so the speedometer itself is just measuring speed. You'll also notice that speedometer can never be negative. Negative velocities, we have to be careful with. They don't mean negative in the sense that we're used to saying negative. For example, you should know that negative 20 is less than negative 5. You know, it, you'd rather be $5 in debt than $20 in debt. So again, negative 20 is less than negative 5. But negative 20 meters per second is still faster than negative 5 meters per second. And it's still faster than 5 meters per second. Negative in physics means 
the other way. So if we want to say positive means north, his velocity is 20 meters per second. Her velocity is 25 meters per second. Um, and then there's a third person. Uh, his velocity is negative 15 meters per second. So you have two people going north, one at 20, one at 25, and a third person traveling south at 15. The negative didn't mean anything in terms of uh, how fast or slow they're going comparatively. just meant they're going the opposite direction. Since we call it north the positive direction, the negative direction would be the opposite of north, which is south. Now, average velocity. You'll see average velocity, instantaneous velocity. Average velocity is what we define as change in position over time. Uh, and instantaneous says, how fast are you going right now at this instant? Uh, instantaneous is what we care about more frequently because we care about uh, points of impact. So here's a quick example to tell you the difference. Let's say you're traveling to Mackinac City. It's 250 miles away. Your average velocity was 20 or 71.4 miles per hour, 250 miles in three and a half hours. Your instantaneous vel velocity changed constantly. Sometimes it was 70. Sometimes you went above the speed limit and it was 80. Sometimes you had to slow down as you were traveling through a small town and it was 25. Sometimes it was zero because you stopped to fill up for gas. The instantaneous velocity is going to be constantly changing. The average velocity, yes, it does change over time as it can increase or decrease, but it's truly measuring velocity over a huge span of time. Instantaneous is not measured over any given specific quantity of time. Thank you for watching.